All right, I have like no yarn, so let's try to make something for my baby sister and pick up where we left off in Aphmau's Minecraft diary. So since being left at the village, Garth has now been situated in Brendan's home, fully unconscious and bleeding profusely. Dr. Doctor, yes, that's his name, has come by to check out the scene. Unfortunately, the herbs that he gave to heal Brendan were the last he had, and without them, Garth's time is limited. Brendan, Kiki, and Dale are also there, gathered around Garth's bed. To the village's concern, Xenix is still nowhere to be found. Brendan is devastated because he believes that Garth would have been a more worthy recipient of the herbs that he'd been healed with not so long ago. Kiki is, of course, concerned about her brother who's beating himself up over matters fully outside of his control. Dr. Doctor suggests that the Lord of Brightport was well known for his ability in healing magics. But the Lord of Brightport, as we found out when Aphmau returned Vishir to his family, has gone missing. With no options left, Aphmau sets out to Brightport in order to hopefully find the missing Lord. To support Aphmau's journey, Kiki gives her a stuffed bunny doll, thinking that it might prove useful to her. On her way out, Logan the Merchant is sure to berate Aphmau on her poor lordship for allowing another citizen to be attacked. Yes, Logan is unreasonable, but we love him, you'll see. Thankfully, Donna manages to keep him around for a while longer because Logan is whipped or whatever. After a bit more sheer wilding from Aphmau, we finally arrive in Brightport. Waiting at the gates is Azura, a personal guard to the Lord of Brightport and Garth's good friend from guard training. After Aphmau fills her in, a fretful Azura informs her that the only lead they have about the Lord's disappearance comes from Merida, Fisher's widowed wife. But with guards losing their memories as a side effect of the Lord's disappearance and the apparent looming threats of conflict with the neighboring werewolf tribe, Azura's hands are tied. So Aphmau begins helping with the investigation. She goes to speak with Merida, but when Merida finds out that they still don't have a lead on Vicious Killer, she wants nothing to do with her. But in the corner, a small blonde child watches their exchange and Aphmau approaches him. His name is John, and he wants to help. But before he does, he wants Aphmau to help him find his friend who, as a result of the Brightport werewolf conflict, had been imprisoned. Aphmau goes and saves the werewolf cub from a poorly guarded underground cell <laughs> and returns him to John in quick order. Grateful, John tells Aphmau that if she returns the cub Lowell to his family, then they should know something about the missing lord. So in the night, Aphmau goes to the outskirts of the village to give Lowell back to the wolf tribe. But upon approaching them, the alpha werewolf mistakes her for a threat and attacks her. That is, until he perceives the scent of the stuffed doll that Kiki gave her. Realizing that she's associated with Kiki, a friend of their tribe, he stands down and invites Aphmau to their village. However, from yet another distance, the green shadow watches them as they traverse further from Brightport. Upon arrival, the alpha werewolf, Boldolf, apologizes to Aphmau for his aggression and proceeds to reveal some cutting information. Okay, so, Vischer was a werewolf from their tribe, which is why they are not aggressive towards John and Merida. His death was the final straw after years of mistreatment and violence that tipped off the wolf tribe's animosity towards Brightport and instigated the very real threat of war. But when Aphmau tells Boldolf the true story of Vischer's death, that he'd been attacked in her village, Boldolf is regretful of their assumption that Brightport was at fault. However, solemnly he informs her that in order to wage war against Brightport, they built another portal, foolishly hoping to summon demons to assist them in battle. As they were engaging in this ritual, the Lord of Brightport came in absolutely unfortunate timing to explain the situation with Vischer and to seek peace. Then their female cub, one of the only remaining pure blood werewolves, was taken into the nether by one of the demons that they sought to control. The Lord went in after her. But then the demon destroyed the portal behind it, and now the werewolf trub is hopeless to save either the lord or the cub. Of course, Aphmau offers to help. Boldolf gratefully provides her some supplies so that Aphmau can seek out the necessary resources to rebuild the portal. Before leaving, Aphmau speaks with Kira, Boldolf's wife. Kira, in her repetitious style of speech, tells Aphmau the story of Boldolf and Kiki's friendship. When they were only children, Kiki saved Boldolf from a gang of hunters but she was wounded in the process, so Bodoff brought her back to the tribe to be nursed back to help. Kiki proceeded to live with them for a while, becoming close friends with Bodoff and learning the way of nature from them. 
The tribe eventually returned her to her worried family, and Kiki gave Boldolf the stuffed rabbit as a parting gift, which Boldolf returned to her lest its sentimentality interfere with his future as Alpha, for he had, in fact, caught feelings. After this absolute information speedrun, <laughs> Aphmau finally ventures out to rebuild the portal. After a while of figuring out how to play Minecraft, she obtains enough obsidian. The wolf tribe gathers around and watches with anticipation as Aphmau enters the nether. On the other side of the portal, in the red, fiery depths of the nether, Aphmau quickly finds the fortress that the cub and the lord were taken to. As she steps onto the netherrack bridge, she immediately engages in a combat with a duo of red-clad knights who are defending the fortress's inner quarters. When she gets past them, she encounters the king's guard, a gargantuan blaze consuming the full inner space of the fortress's entry hall. Upon defeating it, Aphmau plows through a few more guards up the stairs to her final opponent, an incredibly weakened shadow of the king, declaring his eternal reign of darkness. The shadow, as it is weakened, goes down easily, and Aphmau goes to free the wolf cub, Kiva, who is caged in the room. Upon opening the cage, she asks Kiva about the Lord of Brightboard, and Kiva, seemingly fond of the good-hearted man, tells Aphmau that he'd been captured by a masked man just prior to her arrival. With the Lord of Brightport still missing, Aphmau takes Kiva and makes her way out of the fortress and back to the portal. But when she turns the corner, she sees him. Wielding a suspicious carrying device, the presumed missing Xenix. Without a word, he looks at her, and he exits through the portal. So up until this point in the story, we've read the old Lord of Phoenix Drop refer to the Shadow King and the Knights of Shadow in his diary entries. We've heard from Bodolf of demons and from the Nether attacking the Wolf Tribe. And now we've seen with our own eyes these demon knights, this King's Guard, and the weakened shadow of the King itself. And all series long, we've been dealing with these morally ambiguous, shadowy figures causing chaos and mischief in the land. So who is the Shadow King? Who are these Shadow Knights? What all are they responsible for and why do they want problems always? We'll answer these questions next time. <laughs>